take me back to the Black Hills, the Black Hills of Dakota, to the beautiful Indian country that I love. And when I get that lonesome feeling, and I'm miles away from home, I'll hear the voice of the mystic mountains calling me back home. So take me back to the Black Hills, the Black Hills of Dakota, to the beautiful Indian country that I love. Well, it was a long way drive from the University of South Dakota where I was teaching and uh, six and a half hours drive, I suppose it's short by American standards, across an amazing landscape that was barren, windy, but magnificent. I was heading for the Black Hills to photograph a number of things including Mount Rushmore, which you probably know from North by Northwest, the end scene of that. But Mount Rushmore is um, in the centre of a sacred place for the Dakota Indians. The Black Hills are sacred to them, and they were stolen by the United States in the 19th century. Anyway, right next to the Black Hills, well, next in American standards, an hour and a half drive, is the uh, Lakota Sioux Reservation. It's the poorest reservation in the United States, um, but it also is the place where the dream of Indian Americans at all having any freedom finally ended. And I've read, wrote this uh, in my book here about it, it says that um, uh, they'd been living in the, in the 1890 on uh, half rations. The Indians had been herded onto this reservation um, to provide land for white settlers. And it says, in a one-sided confrontation with the US Army at Wounded Knee, the historian D. Brown estimates that around 300 Lakota Sioux were killed or wounded against army casualties of 25 dead. An eyewitness, Black Elk, stated before he died in 1950, quote, I can still see the butchered women and children lying heaped and scattered all along the crooked gulch, as plain as when I saw them with eyes young. And I can see that something else died there in the bloody mud and was buried in the blizzard. A people's dream died there. So the dream of any form of independence for the Indians um, expired there and they were herded onto reservations and stayed there. So if you want to know what it's like to be in lockdown forever and ever, ask any American Indian on a reservation. It's a strange thing, I made a piece of work about it. In fact, one of the things about the whole place was this strange juxtaposition you find in America between things that don't normally go together and I tried to put the whole thing together in this work I did on Wounded Knee in the late 80s. It's about 10 foot wide this thing, 6 foot high. And it has everything in it from uh, uh, the Wounded Knee site where this took place, uh, the children uh, I photographed and interviewed whose fathers committed suicide which is quite a regular thing, the Sioux Nation laundromat, a centre of nation sign said this is the US centre of nation geographically, but it's also the centre of the Sioux Nation. Um, and right near it, apart from being right Mount Rushmore, are the bases for the American uh, nuclear deterrents, these huge rockets which are photographed, and B-52 bombers uh, there as well, uh, defending freedom. And I put the whole thing together in that collage. But talking about strange juxtapositions, let me just bring it a bit closer, of all those strange things that are juxtaposed. Let me just see if I've got it on the camera properly. Yeah. Um, is that, you know, life in America is often more surreal than any art Vaughan can make. And uh, it's a truth that, uh, as I said, the white settlers were living nearby. And one of the white settlers wrote this. He wrote... Our only safety 
depends on the total extermination of the Indians. In this lies future safety for our settlers. He wasn't just a writer of things like that, he also wrote children's books. And his most famous children's book was turned into one of the most famous films of all time.